coming to uh, tonight's lecture by someone who needs no introduction, and I've been given the awkward task of introducing someone in their own home, uh, so bear with me. Uh, the lecture tonight is entitled Polyphonic Modernisms and the Art of V.S. Gaitonde. Seeing the 20th century through the psychogeography of shifting and overlapping tectonic plates through modernism, decolonization, nationalism, postmodernism, and postcolonialism, as well as interactions between Asian, European, and American artists, intellectuals, and cultural practitioners, a number of histories emerge conjuncturally as polyphonic modernisms. Sandhani Podar's lecture will explore the life and times of the celebrated Indian modernist painter V.S. Gaitonde from the 1940s until his death in 2001. Gaitonde's oeuvre was informed by the traditions of Indian miniature painting, <clears throat> East Asian calligraphy, and Western movements such as non-objective painting, abstract expressionism, and tashisma. Alongside these influences, various Indian philosophers and Zen Buddhists had a profound impact on his worldview. Sandini Podar is a London-based art historian who has been affiliated with the Guggenheim Foundation for the past nine years. She currently serves as adjunct curator, working on special projects in New York and Abu Dhabi. Sandini was formerly associate curator of Asian art, where she was responsible for global exhibitions, acquisitions, and scholarship on modern and contemporary Asian art for the Guggenheim's International Network of mu Museums. She cur curated Anish Kapoor Memory, and being singular plural for Deutsche Guggenheim Berlin and the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York. She also organized the Guggenheim's presentation of Zarina, Paper Like Skin. Bodar was a jury member of the 2008 Hugo Boss Prize, awarded that year to the Palestinian American artist Emily Jassid. In 2014, she cur curated Barthi Kerr Misdemeanors at the Rockbound Art Museum in Shanghai. She graduated with a master's degree in art history from Bombay University and has a master's degree in visual arts administration from New York University. Quite impressive. Uh, but before I, I, I bring Sadhadi or I ask Sadhadi to come to the podium, I just wanted to announce a few of our upcoming programs at Gyan Pravan. This is also embarrassing because they're ha having to do with me. Um, so I'll be giving a lecture on February 19th at 6.30 p.m. on uh, the Arab Spring. It's entitled Anxiety After the Arab Spring. And I also will be offering a 10 seminar intensive uh, course on structuralism and post-structuralism in March um, of this year. And you can go to our website. It's under our rubric, Theoretical Foundations. And our website has the information on the days that will be had also, held also from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. So please join if you are interested. Um, we have a lot of other stuff that we're planning for the coming year. I just want to say, to, say a few things. One, in August, we'll be doing um, an intensive short course on Soviet and post-Soviet art with regards to locating the modern and the contemporary over, 20, over the 20th century Soviet and, and post-Soviet developments. Um, we'll also be hosting an international conference on the phenomena of enjoyment in politics through the lens of Jacques Lacan, the later Jacques Lacan, um, in December 2016, uh, with our good friend Slavoj Žižek having agreed to keynote it. Um, but without further ado, let me ask Sandri to come to the podium. Hi. Thanks. Um, thanks very much for having me, um, my mom and Rohit and Andre. Um, I thought that prior to giving you the um, structured lecture that I'd give you a, a preview into the exhibition, or rather a post view into the exhibition because it's now over, uh, at the Peggy Guggenheim Collection in Venice. It just closed a couple of weeks ago. So could we have the video, please? No, it's okay. Don't worry. We're at home. Welcome to the exhibition in V.S. Kaitonde, Painting as Process, Painting as Life. This exhibition is the first exhibition of a great Asian master at this uh, much beloved museum. Gaitonde was um, an Indian artist who lived in Bombay and New Delhi from 1924 until his death in 2001. Venice has always been a city at the historic crossroads of East and West, so it's wonderful to show an artist working in the 20th century here in the context of Peggy Guggenheim's life and her great collection of European art. The exhibition uh, consists of over 40 works, 
um, spanning Gaitonde's entire artistic development from the early 1950s to the late 1990s. We first showed it in New York at the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in 2014. So it's wonderful to extend the international tour and open up this great artist's life and practice to European audiences. Gaitonde was a great um, artist who worked with color, form, texture, space, abstraction and line in works that um, starting in 1957 um, really deal with the non-objective and this was a term that he preferred to use to describe his own work and of course it's uh, not coincidental that this exhibition is being hosted by the Guggenheim whose former history as the Museum of Non-Objective Painting was the initial inspiration to show Gaitonde here in the galleries. The Guggenheim's history of collecting great modernist artists like Kandinsky, Malevich and Clay provided a wonderful intellectual and artistic springboard to think about Gaitonde's work not just in the context of early European modernism but to think about how art history circulates and inspires artists over time. Kandinsky, Clay and Malevich were all influenced by theosophy which um, had its origins in Hinduism and of course we know that Kandinsky himself was a great inspiration to American uh, mid-20th century abstractionists and in turn these European artists were deeply influential on the generation of Indian artists uh, who came of age in the 1940s including Gaitonde. The exhibition is uh, drawn from 30 leading collections, both public and private, internationally. This is the first time that many of these artworks have been lent. Um, they're on view for the first time to the public. So it's a very historical moment, not just for India, uh, but also for Gaitonde himself. There has been no previous scholarship on his life and his practice. So this is a very seminal moment for the study of South Asian modern and contemporary art and in many ways uh, the rewriting of 20th century art history. I think we hope that uh, visitors will encounter a great sense of uh, silence and meditation, of uh, colour, of um, Gaitonde's own deep engagement with Zen Buddhism different schools of Indian philosophy. Um, can you hear me at the back? Okay, thanks. Um, I thought that was um, a helpful way to start to visualize this exhibition that's been um, underway for the last five years. We started the project in 2011, and uh, this week all of the uh, paintings and works on paper have been returned to the lenders. So it's, uh, it's a full circle. V.S. Gaitonde once stated, if one is fortunate, painting continually happens within oneself. Gaitonde's non-objective canvases from the late 1950s onwards are embodiments of Zen Buddhism in practice. In his application of controlled accidents and consciousness in action, while savoring the beauty of incompleteness, one senses the artist's deep interest in Zen, as it developed both in his life and in his creative process over a period of 50 years. Gaitonde's predilection for silence as the Tao of painting and life itself has assumed almost mythic status amongst his contemporaries. Despite the consistent high regard of his surviving peers and other admirers, however, Gaitonde's life and work has remained sorely understudied in the genealogies of 20th century world art. 
the Guggenheim Foundation's retrospective of the artist's work, V.S. Gaitonde, Painting as Process, Painting as Life, has begun to remedy that state of affairs, offering international audiences an opportunity to study and discover the oeuvre of this compelling artist. As New York Times art critic Holland Cotter states, Gaitonde, and I quote, looked westward, eastward, homeward, and inward to create an intensely personalized version of transculturalism, end quote. Sunil Kaldate's film, V. S. Gaitonde, shot in 1995, and one of the few archival traces of the artist's life and his immediate surroundings is revealing. In the 27 minutes of footage, Gaitonde never addresses the camera. We see the artist in his modest Barsati in Nizamuddin East, New Delhi, in the mid-1990s, dressed in a black cotton robe, smoking a cigarette, and locked in contemplation. Directly behind him is a sparse, meditative painting in earth tones that exudes a sense of dynamic stillness, quietude, and profound confidence. Refusing to be disturbed or interrupted in any way by the presence of a film crew or recording apparatus, Gaitonde is consciously oblivious to these extraneous activities and movements, which do not belong to the natural order of things. This is Zen in practice. Gaitonde's process of painting is never revealed or discussed. Rather, we enter a private space that is utterly frugal and unkempt, or rather, an interiorized world, for which the inhabitant has seemingly abandoned all care. We come upon layers of accumulated dust, cobwebs, piles of half-used tubes of Windsor and Newton and Camel oil paints, and a lone photograph of the Saint Sri Raman Maharshi propped on a refrigerator. In the midst lies a single unmade bed, a few stray pieces of cane furniture, dozens of LP records, books, magazines and papers, a small television set and a record player. The room leads to a terrace where the artist is seen watering a lone cactus or leaving rice for the crows. Away from his studio, Gaitonde takes a daily stroll to a neighborhood tea stall to drink a glass of milk. Schubert's unfinished symphony accompanies the last section of the film, a piece of music favored by the artist for its highly accomplished romantic and dramatic spirit. Apart from stills of some of Gaitonde's canvases from the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, photographed away from the studio, Kaldate provides only a few visual cues. Of the ebb and tide of the ocean, time-worn cliffs and crackling walls, the slow movement of a line of ants, and dark clouds silhouetting a setting sun. Although the world has come to regard Gaitonde as a recluse, one should rather say that he tended towards solitude, Peers like artists Krishan Khanna, Ram Kumar, and Akbar Padamsi remember him as being spirited, gregarious, and charming. Krishan Khanna states, and I quote, There's a very strong correlation I see between the way Gaitonde thought, the way he lived, and the way he painted. Gaitonde was a very philosophic fellow. Zen Buddhism, it's not a negation of things, it's always seeking a moment in time when things happen, when things come right. That's it. With Pollock, the line took on a holy bodily gesture, like the trace of a performance in color. With Gaitonde, his actual work is the trace of the elements with which he chooses to start a painting. He chooses, say, two colors. He makes his ground absolutely perfect and he doesn't know what he's going to paint. It begins with confronting nothingness. And nothingness begins by almost emphasizing nothingness." End quote. Short, stocky, self-critical, and confident, 
Gaitondi scorned sentimentality in his biography and his artistic practice. He cut ties with his immediate family early on, stressing the importance of the moment, the completeness and joy of the creative process, and the intimate relationship between painter and painting. Guy, as he was popularly known, was a man of few words who dedicated his life to painting. He was also an ad avid admirer of Indian and Western classical music, world cinema, vernacular literature, and poetry. When the 20th century is viewed through the psychogeography of a series of shifting and overlapping tectonic plates, through modernism, decades of decolonization and nationalism, postmodernism and postcolonialism, and the intercultural dialogues between Asian, European and American artists, intellectuals and cultural agents, what emerges is the story of several simultaneously evolving histories, or what I have termed for the purposes of this project as a system of polyphonic modernisms. As critic Geeta Kapoor states, and I quote, it may be worth mentioning that modernism as it develops in post-colonial cultures has the oddest retroactive trajectories and that these make up a parallel aesthetics. It is crucial that we do not see the modern as a form of determinism to be followed in the manner of the Stations of the Cross to a logical end. We should see our trajectories crisscrossing the Western mainstream and in their very disalignment from it, making up the ground that restructures the international." End quote. During a public program in the Guggenheim's exhibition galleries in New York in fall 2014, art historian Iftikhar Dadi observed, and I quote, modernism was a kind of multiculturalism before it became fashionable from the 1980s onwards. It was a call for a utopian, universal, aesthetic world beyond cultural and religious difference. This, of course, had tremendous bearing on the complexity of social processes in South Asia during the 20th century, a region which was being consumed with difference and particularity. The, true, the two broad arenas that offered universal affiliation then were the left and modernism. Both attracted the best and most sensitive thinkers and practitioners, and there was a complex and often uneasy traffic between political commitment and artistic autonomy." End quote. Gaitonde's consistently non-representational works from the nine, sorry, Gaitonde's consistently non-representational works from 1957 onward resist any intrinsic meaning or description and must be dealt with on their own un uncompromised terms. One should experience them ontologically rather than in epistemic terms, given their resistance to narrativity. This, however, does not make them unmoored universalizing agents. Rather, they exist in time and are contingent on the socializing factors of history and culture, the very factors that make them modern. One may simply point to the oeuvre of Kazimir Malevich, whose utopian abstraction and belief in the zero of painting, or objectlessness, emerged within a milieu of revolutionary socialism. Starting in the early 1970s, Gaitonde developed I'll just show you a few more <coughs> early non-objective works. <coughs> Starting in the early 1970s, Gaitoni developed a particular lift-off process in his Nizamuddin studio, using scraps of magazines and newspapers to leave layered imprints or residual traces of color on the canvas surface through the measured application of a paint roller. Artist Krishan Khanna has described these as happenings, given their accidental and spontaneous nature. He states, and I quote, Gaitonde applies three or four or five layers of white on the canvas so that the reflective index of color is enhanced. Then he leaves that to dry, makes it absolutely bone dry, and that takes time. Then he works with mixtures of solid colors, which are opaque colors, and then with translucent and transparent colors, all at the same time. Then he perhaps makes a blob. Then he works in different places and different things here and there, 
Then his problem is how to collate all of these things. That collation, the colors that intervene between one part of the action and the next part of the action, the way the colors collate by using another neutral color, maybe a white, and how they compound together, how they combine and they isolate certain forms, that color which he gets there, it's impossible for him to repeat. I think that's his big contribution. They're happenings, actually. He's doing it, and he can't do it again. It can't bear repetition. In his whole rep repertoire, he won't see the same colors again, even the same shade of red. Dadi goes on to state, and I quote, this experimental procedure exemplifies Gaitonde's aesthetic restlessness, his constant probing in the most material way possible to investigate his unwavering belief in the universality of modernism and its ideals beyond the material world itself, end quote. A great Gaitonde canvas exemplifies the very tension inherent in any modernist work what art historian Hal Foster describes as the materialist-idealist contradiction. This tension, however, does not pertain only to modernism as such, but is also imminent in Gaitonde's philosophic outlook. Dadi continues, and I quote, the effacement of the ego is a goal, 